Hello ladies and gents, Hagbard Celine here on another beautiful afternoon and I have before me an article that was sent to me by what I presume is one of my subscribers as it was emailed to me and my email address is indeed available on my information page if you would like to send me anything that you'd like to see. That being said, this article is entitled 12 Things About Being a Woman That Women Won't Tell You Except this woman, Caitlin Morin, who will? Well, thank you, Caitlin, for one of the most snarkily written articles I have ever seen in my entire life. And thank you to the subscriber that sent this to me. Let me tell you, lad. Ah, that one's for you. Because, as I discovered after reading just the introductory paragraph, there is absolutely no way in hell somebody with a functioning brain rattling around in their head could read this article and not want to kill themselves. So instead, I will gird my loins with this beautiful bottle of craft beer from a local bottling company right here in beautiful, beautiful Oregon. And I will ignore the fact that this article was clearly sent to me in an attempt to get me to jump off of somewhere quite high or hang myself. We will also take a moment at the end of all this to peruse the comments section in which I think we will find that there was one person in particular that was quite offended by this. I hope you all enjoy. Buckle in, because it's going to be a kind of long one. And uh, let's roll it. And this article was written for the Esquire magazine. Truth be told, I'm not wholly familiar with this or what it does, but from what I can tell, it's a pop culture magazine. As I said, the title is 12 Things About Being a Woman That Women Won't Tell You. Except this woman, Caitlin Morin, who apparently is a traitor. The snarky introductory paragraphs read, Hey, I'm not going to woman-splain feminism to the readers of Esquire. That's not happening on my watch. You're sophisticated 21st century men with a copy of the El Bully cookbook, a timeless pair of investment brogues, and a couple of Joni Mitchell albums for when you want to sit in your leather armchair, have a little noble, necessary man cry. Because that's not a deeply condescending manner in which to put, you know, all of that. Not just stereotyping men that read the Esquire, but then insulting them at the end. That's lovely. And for the record, I am indeed in a leather armchair right now. It just so happens. You don't need me lecturing you because you're not hanging out the back of a bus shouting clunge at a bunch of terrified 15-year-old girls. You've got sisters, mothers, lovers, female friends and colleagues, and you've never once gone up to any of them shouting blimey, you didn't get these out of the pond while honking on their breasts in a manner of Sid James. You're down with the sisterhood. You've got eyes. You know what's going on out there. You've noticed that while society's happy for famous men to age and become distinguished and generally wander around looking like a fucking wizard, the women still seem to be 20 years younger and standing there in the cover of magazines like, oh, my clothes, they fell off, even if it's James D Dame Judy Dench. It's just such a childish way to write an article. I don't understand how this got published professionally. It's really kind of frightening. It truly is. It bothers me that this is the level of writing that gets you published nowadays. I like that the end is even if it's Dame Judi Dench as though Dame Judi Dench herself wouldn't want to look attractive in spite of her age. I mean realistically speaking this presumes that a man that is in his 50s that has gone to gut and wrinkly in the face is still considered as attractive as a man in his 50s that still looks 35 and is rather svelte in build and because that's really what's being loved in these older men. It's not their age entirely, it's the fact that they have kept it together for so long. You know the pay disparity. Still 20% less for women in this country and not a single prosecution even though it is literally illegal. You know babies come out of vaginas and it fucking stings. And that the vaginas are having a hard time anyway. What with all that waxing they get. I mean, that's $20 a pop, my friend, every single month just to feel normal. It's basically VAT on your minge. Imagine if you had to get your bum hole stripped every 30 days, lest the mean girls at school corner you on the bus and go, I've heard you're like cat weasel down there. Someone who fingered you said it's like diddling a gonk. Uh, honestly, whoever sent me this article, I have no idea what a third of the words on this fucking page mean. I don't, I, I, I didn't know what the one above meant. I'm not sure what they're referring to with cat weasel or gonk. 
I'm presuming this is British or Australian or who the fuck knows, but I've never heard of some of these words, and, and the phrasing is an attempt at highbrow intellectual delivery about lowbrow topics. It's a very, very strange combination, and it bothers me a little bit. Beyond that, I do like the fact that she managed to point out the fact that, guess what? It's other girls at school that are doing this. The boys didn't. As a matter of fact, you didn't need to do that to get male attention. That's the problem, if you noticed. You got male attention without following the little mores that the women are imposing on each other. You've seen Amy Schumer's brilliant, edgy sketches on contraception and rape and laughed along with them. You've called Donald Trump a twat for his sexist comments about a female news anchor being on her period. Which is ironic, considering twat is a gendered insult you probably shouldn't be using. But beyond that... You've watched the whole Caitlyn Jenner trans thing unfold and gone, You know what? This all seems fair enough. I'm down with the trans thing. So no, I'm not going to woman-splain feminism to you. It's the 21st century, and you are, most assuredly, not a dick. Well, you've made a mistake. I am indeed a dick. You like women being equal to men, which is all that feminism means. No, it's not, and yes, I do. Saying one does not make it true. Not all the penises being burned in a penis bonfire. Just women being equal to men. You were like my friend John when he talks about dating alpha women. Feel intimidated by them? Christ, no. Dating and marrying powerful women is like big game hunting. I fuck tigers and panthers, not chihuahuas. I don't know why he's using animals that hurt me to read. Uh, it physically hurt me to read. No, you get feminism. You don't need Tits McGee here to take you through it one more time, which is exactly what you're going to do anyway. So, what I'm going to do instead is tell you 12 things about women that women are usually too embarrassed to tell you themselves, because I am a chronic oversharer. Shocking, a woman that's a chronic oversharer. Please, dear, do go on. And incapable of keeping secrets. Again, shocking. Really fucking shocking. I'm like the other deep throat, that chatty Watergate one. That's the deep throat I am. I get that you're making a bad porn joke. Congratulations on the bad porn joke. 1. No mumbling. Like you, we feel a bit embarrassed about saying the word feminism, as you should, like if you said the word communism, or fascism, or Nazism. It's the same when you say the word environment. They both have a slight implication of, I'm now going to launch into a speech that's basically about what a great person I am. Your self-awareness is lovely, but you drop it, like, immediately in this next paragraph. Unfortunately, in both cases, the entire future of the world does rest on people being able to say those words properly and not mumbling, feminism, or environment. You just have to shut yourself in a cupboard and say them over and over again. This is actually the treatment they used to use for penis and vagina in classrooms and, and puritanical societies to get kids used to it. You just say the words over and over again. So apparently these words are dirty enough that they've been tainted to that level. I'm not sure how that happened. Until they, make, until they feel as normal as saying pina colada or Michael Fassbender, neither of those feels normal to me. Which are both, when you think about it, much odder sounding. Yeah, yeah congratulations. They are indeed. The man. So when women talk about the man, they're not talking about you. You're just a man. You're not the man. Okay, but you're implying that I somehow have gotten something from the existence of this the man. Similarly, when we talk about patriarchy, it's not about you either. You're not the patriarchy. You're just Patrick. Okay, well, I know many people that would be willing to hang out with a Jew, but they still admit that there's something out there called Jewishness. Jewiness that is an inherent part of them being a Jew, and that there are Jews in power around the world. Do you see where this goes? When we're doing those men chants, we're just identifying the general locus of the problem, i.e. most of the power and influence being held by a small number of men. Because remember, that patriarchy is bumming you as hard as it's bumming us. You just said that. You haven't explained that at all. We're bulimic, objectified, and underpromoted. Well... You're, you're bulimic because you, you want to be objectified and you're underpromoted because you're bulimic and you're tired. You meanwhile are unable to talk about your feelings lest you get punched in the nuts by a lad telling you not to be a bender. Um, or we, we, we attempt to communicate our feelings to people and, and we're told to shut up like, like feminists, which happens all the time. You are unlikely to get custody of your kids because of feminists and are three times more likely to commit suicide. Again, this article is driving me to suicide. 
feminism's about sorting all of this stuff out because feminism is a cure-all. Feminism is literally your fucking religion. As ridiculous as it is, it is fucking true. Because it's about equality, not burning the penises. I can't emphasize how much it's not about burning penises. No burnt penises here. Again, if you have to emphasize it that much, if you consider it, it might actually be something inherently wrong with your movement. We're still pretty traumatized about our periods, even though we're now 40. Okay, this is just sad. Truth be told, this whole segment is just fucking sad. It really, really is. It's like, yes, everyone deals with, with issues. Do you, do you, know, you know men have wet dreams? I mean, it's not blood, but the exact same experience occurs, and we don't even get to be awake for it. But beyond that, being a woman doesn't make being a woman any easier. No shit. Being does not make being easier. You could remove all the rest of that from there. All that womb shit is nuts. It's like having an exploding, insane, blood bag of pain in your business end. Nothing really prepares you for it when it kicks off. One day, you're just a kid on your bike. The next, you're suddenly having ti a wedge, a tiny Barbie mattress in your knickers, crying while you watch, I, Burjack, I guess? and eating Nufrim Plus like they're Tic Tacs. Yeah, congratulations. I understand that you have periods. I don't know why it always comes back to this. If this is really your central dilemma of your entire existence, you are a sad, sad human being. Men, imagine if sometime around your 12th birthday, some manner of viscous liquid... Mmm, men know nothing about viscous liquid. Let's say gravy, or man gravy suddenly appeared in your pants in the middle of a maths lesson. Yeah, that has happened to some men. It isn't blood, again, but it, it has happened to some men. And then it turned up every month for like 30 years. Yeah, ours turns up every day like 300 times. What, what's your point? You'd be all like, no, and what the fuck, and seriously this, and we're, we're like that too. We're not wise or in touch with nature or down with it. We're just people with a load of more laundry issues than you. Have you ever tried to scrub blood out of a Premier Inn sheet at 6 a.m. using just travel shampoo and your toothbrush? It's one of the defining aspects of being a woman. Again, if that's truly the case, then, then you've defined yourself poorly. Just realistically speaking, if your defining aspect is dealing with your period bloods, yeah, you need some help. Maybe, maybe, maybe stop the free bleeding and it won't get everywhere. Number four, abortion. Likewise, imagine accidentally getting pregnant at 16 and then having to run past a barrage of anti-abortion protesters outside your local clinic, all holding up pictures of dead fetuses. Listen, I don't agree with what they're doing, but that is well within their rights. Beyond that, you cannot just accidentally get pregnant at 16. It's not like the period at all. It's not likewise at all. A period is a naturally occurring thing that occurs on your own. You do not accidentally get pregnant at 16 on your own. Be responsible first and foremost. We're not dealing with this in a special, noble, lady way. We're like, this is already a really, really shit day. I'm not, I'm not doing this one. You guys can read the bold text on your own. I'm not screeching that into a mic. It's too cruel to my, too cruel to my listeners. It's absurd, the argument here. Listen, I understand you don't like that, and I understand that it's not pleasant, but I actually do think you need to recognize what you're doing. I think pushing too hard and becoming too casual about abortion is actually a bad idea. And this last part. Here's another thing we're too embarrassed to say. We'd love it if a b bunch of big pro-choice men turned up at these clinics and helped escort the scared women's in. That would be some top bro solidarity. Again, that is so grody on so many different levels I can't even begin to express why that is so very, very wrong. Not the least of which would be the fact that some of the victims, or some of the women at abortion clinics are victims of rape, and they probably don't want to be escorted in by men. Secondarily, this whole language at the end, a bunch of, a big bunch of pro-choice men turned up at these clinics and helped escort the scared women in. It's literally doing the patriarchal thing. Verbatim, it is literally asking for chivalry first and foremost, but beyond that, it's saying that you should escort people in. Now, what that comes to mean in the moment, I think the recent Trump rally can help us understand. Number five, talking. In the last year or so, we saw this study from America and it broke our hearts a bit because it explains so much. 
in a mixed gender group, when women talk 25% of the time or less, it's seen as being equally balanced. And if a woman talk, <coughs> if women talk 25 to 50% of the time, they're seen as dominating the conversation. I remember this study, it was utter bullshit. The measurement ratios were dead wrong. And we remembered all those times on social media or in conversations, an angry man has said, women are winning now, women are everywhere. It is men who are being silenced. And it all made sense. Did it? That's your whole point? This is literally number five. This is her whole talking point. One semi-debunked, semi-existent study, and then this, just that it, it makes sense, just talking. Talking is a male privilege. Fear, we're scared. We don't want to mention it because it's kind of a bummer, chat-wise, and we'd really like to talk about stuff that makes us happy. Like, look at our daughters, and we can't help but think, which one of us, and when? We walk down the street at night with our keys clutched between our fingers as a weapon. We move in packs because it's safer. We talk to each other for hours on the phone to share knowledge. Yeah, women just haven't classically been chatty, right? That's not... That's not it at all. No, no. We talk for hours on the phone to share safety knowledge, right? It's not gossip, it's safety knowledge. And of course, it's best if we just ignore the fact that almost all violent crime happens to men, at least at a disproportionately high rate. But we don't want to go on about it to you because that would be morbid, but that's exactly what you do in these articles and all the other articles I read about. Rape culture, lad culture, being afraid of being sexually assaulted in public, being afraid to walk to your car, etc., etc. No, 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 but you don't want to go on because that would be morbid. We just feel anxious. We're scared. Given the figures, we can't help sometimes, but that we're, we can't help sometimes, but feel we're just waiting for the bad thing to come because that would be a realistic thing to think, and we like to be prepared. Awfully, horribly, fearfully prepared. Seriously, this, this girly thing is way over the top. It really well and truly is in this article. If this is supposed to be a feminist article, it's a terrible idea of what some form of being powerful would look like. Oh, this one's my favorite. Number seven, tired. We're tired, so, so tired. From the moment we grew our tits, we've been catcalled in the street, commented on by relatives, ooh, she's big boned. Well, you'll be a heartbreaker. As if we weren't standing there in front of them hearing all this. We've seen our biggest female role models and icons shamed in the press over and over. Computers hacked and nude pictures released. Sex tapes released. For the record, at least 50% of those sex tapes are released by the people in them. At least. I'm giving a benefit of the doubt that some of them are hacked, but for fuck's sake, no, most of those text tapes are released by people that just wanted to release their sex tapes for attention. Would you even know who Kim Kardashian is without the sex tape? So we know even success and money will not protect us from the humiliation of simply being a woman. We know that we must have our babies when we're young. The eggs are running out, but we must also work for less money as discussed above, so that makes us tired. This is why, maybe, women can become suddenly furious. Why online discussions about feminism suddenly ignite into rage. Scared, tired people are apt to lash out. Anger is just fear brought to the boil. Really? First and foremost, women make more money than men when they're younger until they have kids. And then, sometimes, they can't go back to work for the same amount of money. And other times, they can. My mother worked through her pregnancy. Like, you know, human beings have since the beginning of time. You know, most women throughout history have just had their children in the fields when they were working. Oh, no, no, but no, of course, of course, women have never been allowed the privilege of labor. Am I right? No, 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 it's a deep privilege to be the main working class in the society, ladies. Keep up that, that logic. Number eight, wanking. We masturbate as much as you do. One of the few times I have ever been personally offended was when Martin Amos commented on a column I wrote about female masturbation. Christ, Amos said, that's sort of a lad's mad talk. We're, we're more, sort of more male than male. Obviously, I'm noble enough to recognize that Amos is from an older generation. Okay, if you're noble enough to recognize this, and you're claiming the nobility of this recognition, why would you publicly shame the gentleman in an article? 
That seems like an odd move for someone who would recognize that he's from an older generation. One whose women, by and large, did not feel comfortable discussing their sexuality in any great detail. But it does seem amazing that a clever, well-traveled man whose job it is to examine the human condition and who had a pretty steamy relationship with Jermaine Gr- <coughs> Oh god. Oh, I should have read most of this article before bracing that one. Holy shit. He dated Jermaine Gr- Ugh. All right, get it together. Get it together. Holy shit. Who had a pretty steamy relationship with Jermaine Greer at one point has never realized that women can be just as driven by their desire as men. Yeah, men do not know anything about that at all. That's that's not it at all. It's just that he wasn't used to women discussing it in public, you see. That was the issue. Not that he didn't even acknowledge that sexuality for females existed. He just wasn't prepared to read it in your article. I'm going to be honest with you. For the first five years of my adult life, most of my decisions were made by the contents of my pants. Well, that's sad. I can't even say that, and I was a guy. My vagina was, by way of Audrey II and Little House of the Whores, constantly shouting, FEED ME, and I bet you fed it all that you could, and breaking into musical numbers when I was trying to listen to my brain instead. It sounds like you're still mostly listening to your minge, to be fair. It doesn't sound like you've ever started listening to your brain. First five years of your adult life, be damned. I would argue that, to this day, you're still obsessed with your own vagina. If I had not discovered masturbation, I would have spent the majority of my time sitting on shed roofs like a cat in heat, yowling at the moon. You're kind of doing that in this article. If a young woman isn't to go mad, then masturbation is a needful hobby, as vital as going on long country walks to get a bit of air in your lungs and pursuing the revolution. Well... What? And what a hobby it is. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't make you fat. You can knock it off in five minutes flat if you think about Han Solo or some monkeys doing it in the Attenborough. Do How fucked up are your jokes? Even I think that's fucking grody. And it means you can face the world with a kind of stoned, poiscodal cheerfulness that would otherwise require Valium or constant spa breaks. Seriously, do you not see how privileged you sound? You sound insanely privileged. I mean, not just normal white woman privileged, but like way upper middle class privileged. Constant spa breaks, are they? Hmm. There's a reason why God designed our bodies so that when we lie down, our hands naturally come to rest on our genitals. Do they? Hmm. It's the Lord's way of saying, go on, have a fiddle, find out how you work, and then when you go out into the world, you won't be waiting for some bloke to come along and have sex on you. You'll be in the sex, too. It'll be like this joint endeavor, a thing you can do together. Why do you end things like that? It's really obnoxious. That's just a statement. That was kind of how I planned it all along, to be honest. So my 11th commandment is, Thou shalt buff your f- nah. That's official, signed, God. Really, the childishness of this author just bleeds through like her cheap fucking pads. Number nine, clothes. You know when we stand in front of a full wardrobe and say, I don't have anything to wear. Obviously we have things to wear. You can see all the shit from where you're standing, fully dressed, ready to leave the house. What we mean is, I don't have anything to wear for who I need to be today. Oh my god. Yes, another self-imposed difficulty that you guys are going into. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I don't think I'm going to continue to just flat read this article. It's gotten to be too much. Number nine is basically bitching that women have more variety of clothing than men and thus have more choices and thus their life is hard. Number ten is male feminists in which she desperately begs men to pay attention to the concept of feminism and get involved because she realizes that, hmm, without getting men involved in a female supremacy movement, the females might have a difficult time asserting their supremacy. Number 11 is carbs. Our ultimate aim when it comes to men is to find an amusing mate we can have sex with and then sit on the sofa with watching reruns of Seinfeld and eating a baked potato. Discount all that Christian Grey, abs of steel, bad boy shit. Yeah, okay, that is why the cover of, of female uh, books is usually a chubby guy sitting on a couch with his hat on, eating a baked potato and a KFC cut bucket, right? That's, that's what that is. Your priorities are kindness jokes and a high tolerance of carbs. Yeah, I get it. You want to be allowed to be a fat ass and have no one say anything to you. That's pretty standard. And yes, number 12 is your trainers that you're selfish mothering cunts. We get it. Stop. 
Why would you write an article and fucking admit that? Why would the end of your article be admitting that, yes, I deceive you and throw your things away? It's a trope. This is a female trope you have used to close your own feminist article, you laughable cunt. As for the comments section, it's mostly what you'd expect. It's your standard, hey, let me see about that, I'm going to show I'm a good person, you know, the stuff you'd usually see anyway. The more interesting part is down here. Here, I think a one Jess Renee Kelly speaks for pretty much everyone. When she says, number 13, women love when other women make generalized posts about who they are and what they do because we're all the same, obviously. This list does no more than present one woman's personal traits and opinions. To all readers, male or female, please note this article is not to be taken seriously as anything more than a self-indulgent publication. Thanks for speaking on my behalf. Please don't do it again. Amazing. Bravo, Jess. Fucking bravo. And now, the person I mentioned in the introduction is Morgan Durbergs. You see her at the bottom of the screen right here. Now, she actually makes many, many comments. I'm going to actually just leave a compilation of screenshots right here for all of you to read. This person is deadly serious, and they are all over this message board. It's pretty funny, and I kind of feel bad for them, because unlike us who are just irritated by this article, this person was legitimately offended. I'm just going to leave a bunch of these in the end of this video for you guys to take a look at. And I honestly advise you go back to these and check these out. These are, I mean... She just quotes the entire article and explains how it goes against feminism from a feminist perspective. It's really quite interesting, and I really and seriously would advise you all check these out. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's actually more interesting than the article itself. It's more well written than the article itself. Even if it's ridiculous, it's more well written than the article itself. This person has clearly spent a ton of time on Tumblr, and that's kind of funny. That said, I'm going to end there for the day. I was in two hangouts earlier, one with Bering and one with the Naked Ape, and they were both a blast. I will try and find them and leave a link in the description here for anybody that got through all 30 minutes of this. This will obviously be on my alternate channel. I hope you all enjoyed my uh, reading and then response to this article. It was complete trash, written by a complete trash person. Although I hope I manage to add enough in the characterization of the author and my responses to make it at least palatable for my audience. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all next week. There will be schedule changes and I will release a whole channel update video about that due to my new podcast with Reese. I thank everyone gratefully for all the support that I've been given. It's been good fun reading and responding to your comments. Please feel free to continue. Stay safe out there, everyone. Goodbye.